Recently found myself in probably the best D&D group I've ever been in, and it's been a blast so far. One particularly memorable highlight of this nutty little campaign is the continuing exploits of the brave little cobbled NPC who rose to greatness. Be me, joining the campaign late as a sub for someone who stopped coming. Decided to hijack a cobbled NPC named Ardly they recently captured since I was joining in at the start of combat and I didn't want a break flow. Also thought it'd be a fun RP opportunity. Stat him as a halfling rogue and work my character concept around behaviors the NPC has displayed so far. Note Ardu is not the star of today's show. Combat consists of our party. A few allied kobolds led by a higher level dragonborn paladin who was trying to get them to turn a new leaf. Several undead creatures created via twisted experimentation by the ruined town's mayor. The posh, portly mayor turned resident evil antagonist into some horrifying undead amalgam. The long battle begins with a natural one from our warlock, who blasts a kobold next to me by accident. Ardu sweats nervously. The battle continues mostly uneventfully. Although an interesting trend starts to show of this one particular cobble dodging a lot of hits or outright taking negligible damage rolls from the enemies. The mayor has drawn closer to us and has this weird nasty aura. I should also note that the DM has described this undead mayor as having a beautiful handlebar mustache and is making these harumph noises and that's when I think I realized I was in the right group. The battle wins down to justice and the mayor. Miraculously, one of the kobolds has survived all the chaos with the skeletons and charges the mayor head on with his dinky little spear. The mayor is pretty low at this point, but this kobold has very little chance of contributing anything, so I say a silent prayer for the small lizard who has barely survived the aura effect. The kobold rolls an 18 to hit, with no bonuses if I recall correctly, and rolls his little d4. Wouldn't you know it, ends up last hitting the boss and saving the day. Players and DM all love this. Ardu is quietly fanboying over his new personal hero. After the game, we decide to give this kobold a name. I throw out the name Garb on a whim. Sounds koboldy enough, yeah? Alright, he is now known as Garb the Immortal. DM gives him some PC levels for the heck of it, nothing major. The legend is born. Continuation of Garb's rise to glory from the, the previous thread. A little bit of time and a whole lot of nonsense has passed between the previous tale and this one, so some context might be necessary before we get back to our ascended NPC. We have since uncovered documents that prove the noble of a large town nearby, Lord Caderin, had a hand in the mayor's undead experimentation. The dragonborn paladin, Balak's affectionately referred to as Bollocks by the party, who leads the band of reformed kobolds Garb belongs to, wants the party's help in exposing the lord's crimes. Through reasons selfish or noble, depending on the character, we agree to help. Balax leaves us to our own devices while he takes care of a few personal matters, and we have a few little events happen along the way, including a whimsical quest to get a potion of hair growth from an old dwarven tomb so our mercenary friend could grow a beard and impress his dwarven crush. A run-in with the thieves guild my character defected from where the party learns that Adi knew common the whole time when he tries to nervously bargain for his life. Our businessman sorcerer drawing multiple cards from a deck of many things and somehow not breaking our campaign. Learning that our bard was only disguising as a senile old man and is actually a secret operative with plans to depose the sorcery inspired queen. Ardu still calls him grandpa, though. So basically, usual D&D stuff. Apologies for the tangent. Balux rejoins with us and the time finally arrives for us to plan an infiltration into the corrupt lord's estate. Ardu has a plan. Long story short, we set up a pyramid scheme based around a bogus health supplement called Natural. Party Druid is our company face and testimonial. Ardu, businessman sorcerer, and slippery bard promote sales. Warlock is good with potions and can make a convincing product. Amiable fighter and newly bearded mercenary buddy set up our stalls. Balux I've always wanted to get into marketing. Plan is coming together nicely. With a convincing new business that is surprisingly successful, we seek an audience with Caterin under the guise of a business offer. We meet with a representative at the door of the tower, with oddly inert guards scattered about. Midway through our deal the representative simply says you know we've been monitoring your activities since your arrival. Oh, turns out that we had managed to botch every single perception check to notice the spy that had been watching us the whole time we'd been in town. Whoops. Round 1. Fight. Combat goes on against Revenant Man, animated armor guards, and acid spitting demons. Balax and the kobold crew arrive at the tail end of this fight, just in time to see the newly risen vampire lord, Kaderin, burst from the tower. 
Initiate villainous monologue. Brave fighter gives counter monologue. Ardu why yeah, we're not as scared of you hides behind ballocks. Round 2, fight. Slightly nerfed vampire is still pretty soundly fucking us up. Poor little cobbled crew is basically an HP vending machine for Caderon. Garb has a few PC levels but is still not nearly on par with the party, so I am scared for him. He takes a pretty bad hit from Caderon somewhere along the way, and I am trying to draw aggro away from my hero. Caderon is barely hanging on, but none of us can roll for shit, suddenly. And then Garb's turn comes up. You guessed it. Rolls high, last hit spot in dramatic fashion. Day is saved yet again. Curse you. Caderin bursts into a wave of necrotic energy. Oh shit. Garb is knocked out, but isn't killed outright, and Ardu leaps at the opportunity to stabilize his fallen hero. That was amazing. Garb, who has still never spoken a single word, gets up, smiles, and gives a nod to Ardu. Senpei noticed me. New title unlocked. Garb the Immortal, Vampire Slayer. Continuing off of this and this, recalling the exploits of a random cobbled NPC that became something more. Still be Ardu, Cobble Rogue and president of the Garb fan club. After Garb heroically strikes down the vampire, we realize Caterin was still this town's governing official, and so there is a power vacuum left in his wake. The positions of mayor and captain of the town's guard are open and undead thrall had held the latter position. People seem to like our idea of two separate tournaments to fill in the spots. A martial tournament for captain of the guard works well enough, but what about the mess spot? An interview tournament. Applicants are gathered, and one by one make their way to the top of Caterin's tower, where our esteemed panel of completely unbiased interviewers sits. Balak's dragonborn paladin from previous parts, our bard, and our druid. To be fair, our bard is the only one actively fucking with the proceedings. I forget exactly how it was done, but I believe there were three skill checks made by both applicant and interviewer, and the differences were added together for the final score total. Our mercenary friend from last time, Ganosh the Half-Orc, shows up to the interview about as prepared as expected. Our dickish bard, and how would you describe the current socio-economic landscape? Uh, Ganosh is not our new mayor. Several more applicants including our own sorcerer, a representative of the church, and some other NPC we recognize, do a fairly decent job in their interview. They are not our new mayor. A guard from their very first session I hadn't been present for named Tim who had previously been chummed by our warlock rolls in. Tim has the answers to all the hard-hitting questions and knocks his rolls out of the park, helped even further by our bard's subtle inspiration. Tim, the champion of the people, and voice of the working man, is our new mayor by at least a 20 point margin, DM he needs a last name now. I jokingly call out Taylor. Tim the tool man Taylor now runs the town, and now we focus on the combat tournament. Ardu talks to Balak's kobolds and thinks it'd be fun to convince them to join the tournament. Garb the immortal, Vampire Slayer answers the call. Among the other entrants are a few nameless NPCs, our mercenary friend Garnosh, our fighter named Caleb, and another person also named Caleb. Most of our party is watching, taking place in the betting that happens. Ardu is sneaking the equivalent of Facebook chain letters into people's pockets in the crowd to make sure his pickpocketing skills don't get rusty. Our sorcerer is shilling the shit out of his business with the little prestidigitation mark he makes. Before our star players match, I have convinced other kobolds to join Ardu in cheering for garb. And so there are four kobolds near me with the letters GRB painted individually on their chest in real sports fan style. I get incredibly worried when the DM likens Garb's glaive twirling tournament entrance to that of a Baron Martel from Game of Thrones. Even though this is obviously non-lethal combat, Garb seems to stylishly come out on top of the nameless NPC though, so no worries. Matches go pretty much as expected, though Garnosh surprisingly drops to this guy named Timmy who seems to be much tougher than he appears. Our fighter, Caleb, wins his match fairly easily. We all wait with anticipation as the other entrant named Caleb shows up. A figure covered in a crude and shabby imitation of armor holding a wooden sword painted silver shows up, and our warlock is currently missing from the crowd. Ah do oh my gods there's two of them. Caleb uses an eldritch blast to knock out his opponent and this seems perfectly legit to the judge. The tournament gets tense when we learn that little Timmy, the entrant who had been slipping his way up the ranks, is actually a reincarnation of some enemy they fought before and has sworn revenge on Caleb. Party has to intervene and tournament picks back up the next day. 
Caleb elects to not show up in his next match seeing as his first round was only a ploy to market the sorcerer's business further, so Garb wins by DQ. Final round finally begins our fighter versus Garb. In a straight one on one fight, the still silent Garb walks right up to our fighter, smiles a toothy grin, and shakes his hand like a bro. By this point, after his previous two times defeating a boss, Garb is basically just a full-fledged PC, so this fight is actually a pretty even one. The duel goes back and forth, with each whittling the other down, but Caleb clearly has the upper hand, and it seems he's about to win, with Garb at a mere 2 horsepower to his 10 or so. Garb seems to have some ungodly boost in luck when that HP gets low, his last chance to turn it around comes up. Believe it or not, his very first natural 20 in this whole game. Garb wins a combat tournament, and the Cobalt fan club goes nuts. New title unlocked. Captain Garb the Immortal, Vampire Slayer. This actually marks the last of his exploits for now, since this puts us up to current events in the campaign, and being the new captain of the guard has put him in that town for the foreseeable future. We only just got out of this town, but I'm sure we haven't seen the last of the little cobbled who could. You know, I don't know, there seems to be something in the, the I don't know, like, human about the idea of, like, you know, the, the, the whole underdog stories, you know, there's something that I think... We all just can't help but look for them in some weird shape or form. Like, I don't know what part of, like, you know, human psychology that applies to, but I don't know. There's something about them that just make them more enjoyable, you know? And I've been doing a lot of big, very grim, you know, overarching stuff recently. And I just wanted to do something nice, something short, something sweet, something, you know, anyone can digest. And it's just something a bit of fun, you know? Um, just something a wee bit different than usual, you know. For, you can only do 40k for so long, that's all I can say. Um, you know, 40k is it's very bleak, <laughs> you let's just say. And I like to, you know, it, it can affect the mood if you do the same thing all the time. So, like, you know, like I thought this was a nice wee change of pace from what we're used to. Um, if you have any other stories like this, uh, I'd love to hear them down below. Um, if you can sort us out with the names, I, just, you know, YouTube's really funny with putting links into comments, so, you know, sometimes they just get deleted automatically, I don't even get to see them, it's a bit sad, but hey, look, um, let us know what you thought down below, if you enjoyed it, um, I kind of liked it, I, it's not what I would normally do, it's something a bit different, but look, you know, I, I thought it was pretty cool, so, I hope you guys thought it was as well, and I'll see you in the next video, alright? If you haven't already, check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services! It's time to stop!